Hi guys, welcome to Devs and Dice. This is a series called Boxes of Shame, where I each and every week try to win the war against my grey armies of unpainted D&D miniatures. This week's miniature was requested, or perhaps more inspired, by the user uh, named BirdieBird8878. Awesome name. <laughs> Of course I will paint a devil, but not just any devil, a pit devil. Enough yapping, let's get cracking. A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Alright people, so this is the Pit Devil from WizKids. I found this one in my boxes of shame and I figured, you know what, let's paint this one. You can see that there's quite a lot of details on this mini actually, and surprisingly few mold lines. One thing I want to do is to reshape the wings because they were a little bit too tight onto the body for my liking. This is done easily by sinking the parts into hot water, reshaping it, and then sort of fixing it in cold water. When it came to basing, I decided to go with a simple grout stone base for this one. As usual, I am using PVA with some grout and then top it off with some diluted PVA to seal it. This is what it looks like when it's dry and you can see that no little pebbles or rocks are coming off. I Xenophil primed the miniature. This is a great way of easily seeing all of the details on the mini. Now my visual references were Diablo from, well, the Diablo box art, great game by the way, and Darkness from the 1985 film Legend. I started out with a base coat of Mephiston Red, which is a really bright red. I then proceeded to start highlighting. For this I chose a sort of orange-red color, but then... Right, so I plowed on just continuing painting. Thankfully, I started thinking. In my early days of miniature painting, I did previously paint a red devil. This one I actually... Uh, dry brushed with some yellow. And like I said, while this was a while ago and it is an entirely acceptable way of uh, getting a miniature tabletop ready, the result won't look anything like I want it to. It would sort of look more like the devil was on fire or something like that. So what are my options? I could of course go with the trusty old white as my highest highlight. The problem with that is that the miniature would go towards pinkish tones and it would look make it look sort of almost fleshy. Alright, so what do I do then? Well, you know what? The answer is much easier than most would think. Don't base coat with bread. Start with your darkest red, or your darkest sort of red-brown, or even black, and then build up the color bit by bit so that your highlights are the thing that becomes red. I wish I figured that one out before I laid on that base coat. Okay, with that new insight, I started out with Army Painter's Chaotic Red. This is the darkest red color I have at hand. I pretty much just base coated the miniature a couple of times to get good coverage. Then I went in with some Abomination Gore. I used this to lay in some basic highlights, which covers the entire highlight surface. And already here I'm starting to like the results. Then I put some Army Painters Vampire Red, Dragon Red, and Pure Red onto the wet palette. Essentially all of the red colors I had in the Army Painter line. Now I didn't use Dragon Red because it went a little bit too towards Purple Red Pink, which I didn't want. But I have at least three layers of highlights. And I want this miniature to go entirely in red like my references, Diablo and Darkness. 
I guess the only thing that won't be red will be the eyes and, well, all of the horns, all 96 of them. So one could say that this was my study in the color red. Now I added a little bit of P3 Umbral Umber to the wet palette. With that, I started laying out the base coat on all of the horns. With the base coat done, I added some Mournfang Brown, P3 Bloodstone, Rakar Flesh and P3 Thamar Black onto the wet palette. I wanted to use these colors to get a sort of a wet blend gradient on all of the horns. Black would be at the inner part of the horns, the browns in the middle, and Rakar flesh at the tips. Then of course, it was time for the Pit Devil to get a manicure and paint those nails. I'm really happy with the direction I'm going with the miniature, but one thing bothered me and it was the wings. I would have wanted them to have a different tone. So while the miniature was drying, I took the opportunity to use some of that P3 Umbral Umber to the base. Now that everything had dried, but you know what? The wings still bothered me. I wanted to define some highlights and shadows on them. I started out with the shadows and my weapon of choice was to come in with some brown and sepia inks from Vallejo. I have covered this in several videos before, but the great thing about inks is that they do not cover up details. They more tint uh, the underlying paint. I went in with some brown ink first and then with sepia ink to intensify the shadows even further. To feather out the borders, I stippled the inks with a clean brush. And of course, me being me, I took out way too much ink, so I decided to use it to darken the ground on the base. So at this point, it was just a question of letting the miniature dry completely. Right, so once it dried, I looked at the color of the wings and I wanted to make them have a slightly different shade. So I came in with some Druchi Violet shade from Citadel. This I would apply all over the membrane of the wings. And as you can see, the wings are now much darker at the edges. I dry brushed some red to the center of the membranes just to get some highlights. Now once that was on, I wanted to brighten the center of the membranes on the wings. So I came in with a little bit of Vallejo yellow ink. And this I feathered out with a separate clean brush. Once the yellow ink had dried, I felt like it was a little bit too yellow. So of course I came in with some red ink from Vallejo. And I'm doing the same feathering using a clean, larger brush. While that was drying, I decided to dry brush the base with various colors that I already had on my wet palette. Then I started on the eyes and penciling in some white, and I used yellow and red inks to tint it. The original eyes were super small, and I wanted to make them larger, similar to how Carnage looks in the Marvel comics. All right, let's have a look at the final results.
Okay, good people, I hope you liked the result. Please, as always, feel free to post any comments or questions that you might have down below in the comment section. Me, myself, I am happy that I know a little bit more about working with reds and how to highlight it, which is another small step in my miniature painting journey. Anyways, I want to thank you for watching. If you liked this video, then please feel free to like, share and subscribe, as always. It really does help the channel. And actually, on that note, this is the first video that I've created after I surpassed a thousand subscribers. Um, honestly, it means a lot to me because it was my first real sort of milestone goal. And uh, <laughs> I just want to thank you all out there, all of the comments, all of the likes. Uh, it really does help me because I am not what you would call naturally gifted in the miniature painting uh, arts. So all of the comments that, you know, they spur me on, both the good and the bad, as long as they're constructive, um, they help me. So again, thank you so much. It really means the world to me. I mean it. It does warm a Viking's old heart. With that, I want to wish you an awesome day. Until next time, toodaloo.